Hey all, so doing things a little differently here. I've been attaching these bonus fights to my own war videos before, but there have been so many cool new things to talk about this season, and my Alliance ba mates have been so generous with lending me their videos that my war videos are starting to get a little bit longer. And if you're here, then I appreciate how much you have patience for my ability to talk for long periods of time in the first place. So I figured a separate video was better for this, and let's go ahead and get into it. So I think it's official that Spider-Man 2099's time being underrated is probably over. Karate Mike and Legacy have both put out great videos on him, and I know that New Nation has started using him instead of Mr. Negative for Mojo in places, despite them having access to MP Blaze, who is one of the best Negative players I know. And I think that really says a lot. But there's also the recent addition of Anti-Venom and the synergy he has with Spider-Man 2099. And that is a very powerful synergy in both directions. For Spider-Man 2099, it lets him start with the same wither he gets from his special 2. And for Anti-Venom, it prevents the opponent from gaining buffs for 10 seconds, kind of like with Mephisto's soul imprisonment. There are a few differences, though, so let's look at those applications. So here we have another fight from Strands, and I know that I thank him every time, but I really want to just say again how grateful I am that he keeps sending me these amazing fights, because they are so fun to talk about with these brand new champions and the matchups that they make safer, and I know that they are interesting to you guys. As far as I know, this might be the first use of a rank 3 anti-venom in tier 1 war. I mean, please point out to me that if somebody else has done this, but I was excited about this particular fight as soon as his abilities were leaked because of that synergy with Spider-Man 2099, 2099, but because it stops the opponent from gaining buffs at the start. Now, I did think that this was going to work the way that Mephisto does, in that the first time it prevents the power charge from showing up, it would just remove the timer for the power charge, and you wouldn't need to worry about it for the rest of the fight. Because it's phrased the same way as Mephisto. But clearly that did not happen, the timer just kept looping around until it finally happened. But that's why Strands dueled this properly with the backup plan of both blocking the special one, as you are always supposed to do against Dragon Man, and countering it with the heavy, because one thing that makes Anti-Venom particularly safe for this fight is that he has an easy access to stagger. So he has the dual immunities allowing him to get through everything else, but he also has that nice long stagger so that there's very little risk of Dragon Man just turtling and sitting on that power charge as long as you get rid of that first one, which is also a lot easier than it is with somebody like Quake or Red Hulk, because you don't have to worry about it showing up at all for like, I think, 14 seconds. As long as you can get rid of the first one that comes up or land a heavy before it comes up, you kind of have control for the whole fight. Now, I will point out that the damage is not been ideal on this one, but I think that's largely because, as we've talked about a few times, Anti-Venom is one of those characters that has pretty solid crit damage, but his crit rate doesn't look like anything special. So when he got those Furies on the special 2, it did spike his damage, but if he had crit on either one of those, the fight might already be over. So this is taking a little longer, but at this point I know that Strands is just really glad that he made sure to have a backup plan. It's also kind of interesting that his staggers seem to work differently than everyone else's, where the buff is there for a second before going away. But it still seems to work really well for this fight, and I was incredibly happy to see this work out so well. Because... Quake does work there, if you know how to do it, and Red Hulk does work there. But with both of them, you cannot get rid of the power charge at the beginning unless he throws a special, which means that right out of the gate, you're basically 
praying <laughs> for him to throw the special one so that you can block it or the special two because if he throws that special three i have seen that fight recovered but lord is it difficult and i think that anti-venom with his ability to prevent the first two potential triggers of that power gain buff and therefore with all of that time to hit into the opponent and to do things that will make them be more aggressive and more likely to throw that special, and then the stagger to just get rid of every other one for the entire rest of the fight after that first special. I just honestly think that this is maybe the perfect counter for this node, and it also makes Spider-Man 2099 a lot stronger, as we're about to see. So Strands went on to solo our Tiger boss, but I'm showing you work in progress's fight here from Battle Group 2 because this really shows just how strong the anti-venom synergy is for Spider-Man 2099. Because he starts with a wither out of the gate. And that means that right away, Mangog's small passive power gain is actually getting reversed. Notice how his power is going down, not up. So you start with that same minus 125, 125% uh, ability power rate that you get from the special two. Now notice he's at five ruptures, and there they burst, because dropping to zero power actually counts as reaching a bar of power and triggers that extra damage from 2099. As Work pointed out, his Spider-Man 2099 is not very high sig yet. If he did get to a high sig, then those ruptures would have a very high chance of reapplying and you could actually do an incredible amount of damage by just hitting into his block and continuing to let him drain back to zero. Now, Work would say he's also doing a very good job of showing off the damage resistance from True Strike. He was going for the heavy counter to try and make the L2s hit harder, and I think if not for the True Strike, he would have stopped the minute the first one missed. <laughs> because as you saw, that first heavy crit for like 20% of his health, even with the damage resistance, that would have been really bad without it. But because he had that damage resistance and was able, you know, he had quite a bit of health to play around with, he kept going for it because... You know, more debuffs means the special two hits harder. He's now up to three withers, and it is helping him get through the fight that much faster. I think if you're not going to go for the the heavy counter, then what you want to do here, since Mangog will never throw his special one, clearly, is either use read pre-fights as extra unique debuffs for that damage, or go for the special one to get those... Um, physical vulnerabilities, because they count just as much as having even one exhaustion up, and you really don't need the extra power rate reduction when you have two or three withers. And Work was saying exactly that when he came out of this. He's a very smart player, and <laughs> despite the opening of this, as he said, this video does show, like, you know, this is how to do this fight poorly, and here's where he stops being an idiot. Work is a very good player, although he sometimes hides it. And like I said, I'm very confident that if not for that true strike resistance, he would have changed his attack plan in the middle of that to compensate a bit more. But overall, like I said, you see in that fight just how incredibly strong that wither is. Like, the only real threat of Mangog other than getting hit by critical heavies, is when he throws repeated specials and goes unblockable and unstoppable, or when he builds up to his special two and it does a ton of damage into your block. Or, God forbid, both, and he throws an unblockable special two and you just die. But you saw, even at the very beginning of the fight, before any exhaustions were up, just that one wither, he never really got close to a bar let alone throwing multiples. So, really, really hard counter. Some part of me actually thinks that it's a little bit too much, because that's the same power rate reversal that Reed gets after 
his pre-fights and then throwing two special twos. So four full bars of power, Spider-Man 2099 just starts with it. Now he doesn't have access to Petrify, he doesn't have access to those debuff siphoners, and he doesn't have um, the healing reversal part of it as well. But he does have Despair, and just being able to start almost fully ramped, in a sense, is so strong. I was actually just talking in my video on essential cha mystic champions for Alliance War Offense about how while magic still makes my top tier, I consider her stock to be dropping. Because there are fewer and fewer places where you need a power lock as opposed to just a reduction in ability combat power rate to counter nodes like Kinetic Transference, or abilities like Mystic Dispersion, or Mangog's Passive Power Rate, like all of those things, Spider-Man 2099 with the Anti-Venom Synergy, it's almost like magic with a Power Start 2 that she's just carrying around, which is so strong. Because sometimes people will run magic with Morningstar or Purgatory, or Warlock to make her better, Purgatory especially, because for those of you who don't know, Magic's Power Lock is not guaranteed. There is an 85% chance for it to apply on each hit, which results in a 2.25% chance for it not to work on either. And that means that sometimes it will fail. We have actually had it fail four times in the last week in very important fights, and it's led to two deaths. So... Given that magic, for how strong her power lock is, has that small piece of risk attached to her, and Spider-Man 2099 has this, I think that we may start seeing 2099 with, with Anti-Venom as a replacement for magic with Purgatory because he's available as a six-star and can do all of these other things and gets around Mystic Dispersion and can take Dormammu and dodge safely, can safely take Mojo without worrying about his prompts. Like, magic is still great, but this fight especially has kind of told me that I think we're reaching the end of her era. And that makes me sad because she's one of my old favorites. She was my third rank five five star. I used her in war alongside Hyperion more than anyone else for over a year. She's great, but the fact that she is not available as a six star yet and that we have these alternatives, especially in the science class, we'll see how things unfold from here. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks again to both Work and Strands for lending me their fights so that I could rant about them. And I will catch y'all next time. Take care.